Right now we're using solid biofuel. And if I just go straight up from here, we won't even make it to the top of this cliff. See, that's all the further we can go. But if we put packaged liquid biofuel, look at the difference here, man. I mean, we are now just now hitting the halfway point. That is just so much better. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to set up a, a temporary liquid biofuel plant uh, to create a big old batch of liquid biofuel. And then once that's finished, I'll, I'll tear it back down, and then we can set it back up again later if we need to make a new batch. That's how I handled that in uh, Update 8, and it seemed to work okay. Uh, that's not to say that I still might not make like a, a permanent biofuel plant you know once we get programmable splitters later on i'm kind of thinking uh that way but for now uh we'll just set it up temporarily to get some liquid biofuel i also um set up uh, a temporary um here in fact let's just go take a look see at it uh, i set up a temporary encased industrial beams setup over here because um we're, well Hold on. Before we even do that, <laughs> let's go ahead and do the milestone for Mark IV Logistics because um, we have all the stuff. So we need rubber. We need frames. Looks like I'm short 10 frames. And we need 300 encased industrial beams, which I made by hand. And that's why I'm going to set up a temporary production for that. Um, we needed. We only needed 10 more of those. Okay. Because uh, we're going to need a lot of that, you know, for Mark IV belts and lifts. Milestone reached. The transportation of resources can reach new heights of efficiency. With the Mark IV belts and lifts, the truck, but even more importantly, your effort. Your effort. Handling a large and complicated vehicle like the truck should come easy to a well-trained pioneer such as you. They are an obvious improvement over tractors concerning industrial purposes. Improvements for personal use were not measured. Right. Okay. It is lying to us. There's absolutely nothing complicated about a truck. It's just a bigger tractor um, with more storage space and all that sort of thing. Okay. So anyway, let's fly over here. Let me just show you real quick what I set up. So what I did was I, I set up um, an encased industrial beams factory here. And again, this is, it's not my intention to keep this here forever because we'll be making those at our steel plant. Uh, but I essentially have three um, assemblers. This one's making six, this one's making six, and this one's making three. So we're basically making 15 per minute. Um, and that's all just based upon, you know, the quantities of resources that I had available uh, to do this. Um, I changed that miner to a Mark II and I have it clocked to 240 per minute I believe because we still are sending 60 per minute um, down this belt to our temporary steel beams and pipes factory down there and then the rest of it's um, and this is just a smart splitter so um, it's it's sending the overflow out the left output and then feeding the rest of the the iron which is I think 180 per minute into yes because we need um, 45 45 times 3 is 180, right? I think. Oh, no, it's 135. Sorry, my bad. Hmm. If that's the case, did I... Oh, no, but I got four of these. Right, sorry. Okay. So 45 times 4 is 180. So I did do that correctly. I didn't see that one right there. <laughs> uh, and then these guys are producing 45 steel ingots per minute, feeding those into three constructors making 15 beams per minute per constructor and then that's of course being fed into the assemblers i set up a new concrete uh, or limestone harvesting uh, shack over here and i 
over, I believe I overclocked. This looks like it's kind of starting to get backed up though. Yeah, I did overclock these to produce 90 concrete per minute. Um, because of, oh, uh, I think I know why this is maybe blocked, you know, backed up. I started the concrete and then I had to do a bunch of changes, you know, to this iron here and the concrete was just building up. So, um, that's why it's ahead, but we need 18, uh, sorry, no, we need 36 per minute there, 36 per minute there. That's 72. And then another 18 is 90. So yeah, we do have the correct quantity. It's just backed up because it was running while I had the iron down for a little while to fix some stuff that I needed to fix over here. So I don't think that's a problem, but I'll keep an eye on it. And then we're just adding the encased beams uh, to this sushi belt here and pulling it off on the other end using a smart splitter to sort it as usual. Okay, so that's really the only thing I did off camera uh, that I wanted to show you. And there's a, another Mercer sphere up there, but um, we need to have another exploration episode. Now, there's a lot of stuff, you know, still a lot of slugs and spheres and sloops and all that kind of stuff around. And I know that they are there. I just haven't gotten around to getting them yet. Most of that stuff I want to get on camera with you guys anyways. Um, okay, so I did go out to uh, this oasis here and darn it I forgot to pick up that crate again I left some stuff in that crate a long time ago and it picked up a whole bunch of biomass in preparation for this and it's already consumed a lot of it but I had over a full row of, of wood and some leaves and so we're building up the biomass here because we're gonna need it for the uh, liquid biomass how many more leaves are in here okay I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take all of these and put feed those in for solid as well since we still have quite a few more leaves to make the normal and then yeah this is where I have the encased beams in here and they're all being stored up at the top okay so liquid biofuel is the best fuel pre 1.0 for jetpacks and that's why I want it now <laughs> Um, so we have a lot more duration on our jetpack. What we're going to do is we're going to need to set ourselves up a refinery. And we're going to need a packager. And we're going to need a constructor and a water extractor. Those are all the machines that we're going to need to do this. And so we, we have encased industrial beams now. That is a beautiful thing. And I want I want to get a, a depot on those as soon as possible. We'll grab a stack of those, and then the motors we're going to have to handcraft because I don't obviously have any production setup for those. That'll be handled uh, at our steel factory. To do the motors, I'm going to need some stators. I think I still have some stators in here. Yes, I do. Not a whole lot though. Let's see how many we can make. What do we need? We need a total of ten motors. We can do eight. Okay, so let's just do that. I have a, a nice healthy chunk of coupons built back up too. There's a couple more things I want to get on the awesome shop. Uh, like the plastic concrete coating. And that one for sure, I think there... I don't remember if there was another specific thing that I needed to get as well. Right, we need more stators. We should have some extra stators in uh, here. Yeah, so let's just grab some of those. This is just spare parts at the moment. Uh, and, and as you can see, I tore down all that temporary stuff that I had set up over here to clean the place up. Okay, so let's make two more of these. The guy's back now, so... This is our fuel power plants. We'll get into that stuff later. Industrial manufacturing. Yeah, see, that's going to need 200 motors. That needs 250. That needs computers. That needs heavy frames. Right, so 
we really need to get it. I mean, I could craft all that stuff by hand, but we really need to get our steel factory going because that's what's going to make a lot of this stuff. And we don't have any urgent need for any of that stuff at the moment. So let's, yeah, let's just hold off on all of that. It's going to be nice to have bio, liquid biofuel for the jetpack. It lasts, uh, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll do a comparison. I don't remember. It lasts a lot longer than the solid biofuel, put it that way. It lasts longer than any other fuel except for the new ones. And I haven't tested those, of course, because we haven't made them yet. All right, let's go ahead and grab our refinery. And we want the inputs on this side. And we're going to pull it over to about there. So we're not blocking our stairs here. And then we want to... Uh, we don't want to line it up with that one. Well, actually, it's not going to matter because... Yeah, it's not going to matter, so... Let's put it right there. This is temporary, so it doesn't have to be perfectly placed either. Let's try that. We're going to set this to uh, liquid biofuel, which will take in solid biofuel and water. Now what we're going to do is place a lift down here. Oh, that's a Mark IV lift. Look at that. It's beautiful. Uh, we just need Mark. We don't even actually need Mark III for this, but that's what we'll use. Put that there. And then run a Mark III belt into there to feed the solid biofuel. I don't want to convert all of this to liquid, so let's, let's hang on to maybe like three stacks in our inventory for now. Now we need to do water. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to have to probably move this forward even more. Because we have to get a pipe around here, and it's going to clip right into the stairs. Okay. back this way again. I'm going to hold it quite a bit further this way, but we still we need room for the output too. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, that gives us quite a bit more room. Okay, I'm going to set up my number three toolbar for piping and hypertubing, which we're also going to set up in this episode for the pyramid. So let's go to here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> go zoom tight. All right, we will put pipes in one, junctions in two. Um, let's do Pipe supports in three, stackable pipes in four, and pipeline holes in five. And then we'll go to transportation. Hypertubes in six, hypertube entrances in seven, hypertube supports in eight, stackables in nine, and hypertube floor holes in ten. And then if we need these, we can just get them from the radio menu. Hey, look at that, we got a truck. Nice. If you're curious, too, um, this is how much plastic we currently have, and this is how much rubber we currently have. So that's awesome. Okay, let's grab a pipe, and we want to bring it out to... I sure wish they would have implemented straight mode for pipes. That would have been nice. They said something about in their one of their videos that if you guys want it bad enough, then let us know. But it's like, why do you why don't you just do it? <laughs> we have the same, pretty much the same challenges with pipes that we do with 
you know, uh, conveyor belts, at least in terms of going around corners and all that, so it doesn't make sense. But, whatever. There's not a whole lot about this this game that I complain about. It's it's a damn good game overall, for sure. No question about it. Okay, it looks like that's straight. Alright. Let's grab ourselves a water extractor. And we just want to make sure that that's not clipping into anything. I guess I could have pulled it in a little closer, but again, doesn't matter. Temporary. Okay, let's go back to here. Hook you up. And I don't remember which... Uh, oh, I guess we need to reassign this. We need 45 water per minute. Okay. And the water's hooked up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a uh, constructor first. Because we want to line it up on the, on the plastic storage there. And that's probably okay. Now we're going to temporarily take that away and run this in here. That's straight. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Uh, oh, everything's up at the top. So, uh, you know what I think I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to manually uh, let's see, take all. Move it down here. Let's keep a couple of those in our inventory. So that's going to feed plastic into here, and then these are going to make empty containers, or empty canisters, which takes 30 per minute. We don't care about the rate on the input because it's just coming out of storage. However, on the output, we want this to be 40 per minute because I happen to know that's what the packager is going to require. And then the packager, we're going to put right in between here. It's our first time using this machine in 1.0. We've used it a lot in Update 8. And let's actually move this closer to the refinery. And we'll, whoops, pull it to there. Okay. Then we will run a belt out this way. good and into there no clipping everybody looking good okay now we need to run a pipe out here and up into there so go back to and just do it that way because they put the pipe hole above the conveyor pole this is the only machine that I'm aware of in the game that does it that way. Which is a little bit weird. I don't know. Maybe they did it that way to make the machine more narrow. But anyway, that's the way it works. And then we're going to set you to make packaged liquid fuel. And you see it needs 40 canisters per minute. It also needs 40 liquid biofuel per minute. So we need to uh, adjust that. And that means our water extractor should be set to 30 per minute. It's a done deal. Okay. Last thing we need to do is hook up power. Well, power and a place to store the liquid biofuel. I think for that, I'm going to just put a new storage up here. And we'll store it in that container. So that means we want to grab a lift and yeah, we got to point it this way 
and I'm just gonna have to guess on how high it should go. Maybe there? I think that's correct. Look at that. Huzzah! Now all we need to do is hook up power. Um, so here. Let's run a power line to right about here. And it should be here. That's straight, yeah. How are you? How are you? How are you? There we go. All right, guys. We <coughs> excuse me. We have liquid liquid bow fuel coming it coming on. Apologize in advance for sniffing and sneezing and coughing. I am uh, sick, a little bit sick here. I I don't know if I have COVID. My wife's actually gonna go get a couple of tests, uh, but I at least have a cold, and I think it might be COVID because we have someone else in our house that's been sick. My dad with COVID who has been tested for positive. So <laughs> I'll find out later if it is. But anyway, all that to say, I'm a little sniffly and sneezy and nasally. So I apologize in advance for that. Okay. So we're done here. We just need to wait for that to build up. And what we can do though, is let's just grab what we currently have and we'll do our, we'll do a little test here. Um, let's see, where do we want to do this at? We need to do it n near a, something tall so we have something to measure against. Okay, yeah, I, this is going to be real obvious. So, right now we're using solid biofuel. And if I just go straight up from here, we won't even make it to the top of this cliff. See, that's all the further we can go. But if we put packaged liquid biofuel, look at the difference here, man. I mean, we are now just now hitting the halfway point. That is just so much better <laughs> than the solid biofuel. That's why I wanted to make it. Okay, beautiful. I'll be curious though to test the the new fuels once we get you know it, into the the last uh, phase of the game phase five it'll be to see how that compares you know to the liquid biofuel but until we get there and it's going to be a long time before we get there we have some amazing fuel now for our jetpack all right next thing let's go to the awesome shop here we have 63 coupons. Let's print them. I don't th think I have any more. I think we spent... Yeah, I think we spent all the other ones we had. And the, the one thing... Uh, actually, yeah, there's a few things I want to get. I want to go to Customizer. And I want to get the Coated Concrete. I love this. This makes factories look so nice. Um... So let's get that, and then we're we're probably gonna get these two. See, that's gonna be 18, 23, 28 more. So we have, yeah, let's just buy them all. That way we have them. So we'll buy that much, and that still leaves us 29 points. Decoration and organization go hand in hand. Fix it HQ custodian, I always say. Use of these customizer features does not guarantee an aesthetically pleasing or user-friendly factory. That's the part that requires knowledge and skill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's hold off on the tar roof. I'm not a huge fan of those. We wanted to get um, the quarter pipe extensions and the inverted ramps. But that's going to be 10 more points. Okay, let's hold off on those for a second. I think we're done on walls. Yeah, we got all the walls. The only thing we don't have in architecture are industrial walkways, which, like I had mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of those. We have the coffee cup already. We don't need to buy that stuff because we can make it. 
These are the parts that are available to us now. So we could actually buy package fuel. We don't really need it right now, though. How many motors does this give us? 50? Yeah. All right, let's go back to organization. I think, do we have everything here? Yeah, we have everything in organization. We have everything in management except for clean pipes, which I don't really care about. This is just kind of fun stuff that's not a priority right now. Um, so yeah, I think we're safe then to go back to here. Let's get these foundations. Grab those. That leaves us 16 coupons. Yeah, I think I have everything I want. I, I think the clean pipelines are, are too clean. They don't, you know, they don't have enough character. That's why I'm not a fan of them. So we'll probably just sit on the rest of these coupons. Uh, you know what? What the hell? Let's just get this. I might use it in, in a place or two. We might as well. I mean, you know, by the time this is all said and done, we're going to have more coupons than we know what to do with, you know, so. All right. Very good. We'll just put the rest of these in here for now. Let's go back and see if we have, we should have a full stack of biofuel now. That's the other nice thing about it is it lasts so much longer. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Than um, the other stuff. So you really only need one stack of it in your inventory unless you're going to be out and about for a really long time. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. All right, ladies and gents, it is time. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's time for us to spiff this place up and make it look bad ass. We've got some plans. Um, let's start first of all by getting some hyper tubes going so that we, you know, so I can get rid of this because, you know, that's always been a jank thing. Um, yeah, well, so we'll do hyper tubes first. So what we're going to do for that is let's pop this ceiling. We, we can do a hole, a floor hole right there. That's about the only place we can do one to get to the third floor, but that's fine. That works. All right. Now let's grab the tube and bring it down to here. And I want this to be in horizontal to vertical mode. And as soon as the, okay, so here's, here's a little trick for you in case you didn't know right now, because I'm in horizontal to vertical mode, the, the vertical pipe is pushed back at an angle. So if I start to walk this way, as soon as the vertical pipe stops moving, now I know that it's vertical, even if I want to continue coming out this way a little bit further. So there's just a little tip for you. All right, and we are going to do that. So we're going to put the the tube right there. Now we have a nice vertical hyper tube going up to the third floor. So for the second floor, let's actually go up there. I could have fixed this too, but I um, this is this is going to be in the way anyway when we do the exterior walls. So that's got to go regardless. <coughs> so for here, um, I think what we're going to do is yeah, I think we have enough clearance. Okay, so let's put let's put the floor back in place. And we'll grab a hyper tube hole there. And I think we're going to need to bump it right up against this one. Because if we don't, then, yeah, we're going to run into that lift right there. Okay. And then we'll put this there. And we're going to run this guy. Uh, we want to not be in horizontal vertical mode here. We want to be in... Uh, this, uh, what's that? Noodle mode. Doing some weird shit there. Okay, yeah, I guess noodle mode's what we want. And then, um, 
See, that's slowly kind of bumping that up again, which is odd. So it looks like we want to be right about there. That should work. Okay. Let's go up to the third floor and get that one situated. And we, we need to do one all the way up to the space elevator as well. But we won't be able to do that one up the center, obviously, because of the base of the space elevator. So this one's kind of in a little bit of a jank position, but we can't really do anything about that because of the belts underneath it. Um, so we're going to have to kind of juke this one a little bit to the side to get it to work right, which we can do. It's not a big deal. All right, so we want to turn that so it's straight, and we'll just bring this out to here. Uh, except for I want... Hmm. All right, let's try this differently. Let's put you here. What? Oh, okay. It's acting weird, man. Let's just twist it this way and then point it down the center. Like so. Because I don't want that big kind of arch thing that it was doing when I was pulling it back further. That's like no bueno. Uh, all right, so the... Let's see, where's the middle? The middle's right here. Let's pull that up for a minute. So we want the hypertube to come right up in that corner next to our console there. Switch back to here, and we want to go right there. Okay. Let's go horizontal to vertical, and bring this out to, yeah, right there. Make sure we're now in noodle mode, and we're just going to end it right there. Because <clears throat> we don't want it shooting us off that way. Of course, if it does, we have our jetpack now, but still, not ideal, right? Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go along and put entrances on each of these and hook power up to them. Come on, hook. There we go. All right, I'll we'll bring this to uh, about there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it does slam us right into there, but. Maybe what we could do is put like a little net here. That's really dark. But that's our net. <laughs> I I may I might remove that when we build the walls, we'll see. We'll leave it there for now. Let's go back and get a hypertube entrance for here. Uh, oh, that's right. The damn hypertubes turn your light off. I don't know why they have not fixed that in 1.0. Yeah, let's go back to this toolbar. And we'll come out to... I'm going to be right here. And then straight down with the power. It's at a little bit of an angle, but... I think I think we can live with that. <laughs> it's a good thing we have a helmet on, huh? Yeah. You know what? We we're not going to keep that there because that's going to cause us problems later. Um. In fact, oh geez, I just thought of something. No, we'll we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. 
See, that one's... Uh, oops. I didn't mean to go back down that again. Let's go this way. This is actually the one we should have the net on because there isn't going to be anything up here. Um... This is all just for funsies anyways. I guess we could put the net there. <laughs> I don't know, should I take the... Do it without the tarp so it, ac it actually looks more like a net? I mean, it's chain link, but... Construction fence. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. I mean, never mind that our our teeth just smashed into the bar <laughs> on the top of it. It's the con it's the concept, right? Okay, so that takes care of this one. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I thought I got thought I got sucked back in there. Uh, now, let's grab a an entrance and put it there. And then, where's our closest power? We can't... Yeah, we're not going to be able to power that straight down because of the conveyor belt will be right in the way. So probably what makes the most sense is to... Grab you and bring you over to there. And we'll just have to have this come down at an angle. I mean, I guess I could bring it, bring it a little bit closer. We just don't want it clipping into the conveyor belt. Is all. That's not what I wanted to do. I was trying to look at the damn thing, but since we're down here, <laughs> we might as well put this one on too. And we have to run that other tube. Where is our closest power now? Probably... Okay, yeah, let's... um. Let's tap into there. And then bring you up to... There. There we go. This is a... This is a thing, too. Where the red disassembly thingamadoodle stays on there. Okay, what I was trying to check here is I'm going to make sure that's not clipping. Oh, son of a bitch, it is. Okay, so we have to push back one more. Uh, let's just do it this way. Now we're good. go back down and we want to uh, do this one so this is going to be a little bit tricky because these guys are so close together let's go horizontal to vertical but I kind of have to do it that way if I don't want to juke them a little bit, which I don't really want to, and we can't really go this, I suppose we could go around the back side. That might actually be a better idea. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because otherwise, there's times when, when we're wanna, going to want to go to the third floor and we're gonna accidentally go to the second floor and vice versa, right? So yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. Let's have this one come out here. Get an entrance on you. And then power for you. Uh, 
let's go here. And we'll be right about here. And that should get us up to the second floor. Where we need to put an entrance here. All right, now power, 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 power. Got a conveyor belt right smack dab where we need to go. Can we bring you to here? And then down to here. Yeah, that's probably about as good as that's going to get. I mean, I could... Yeah, we could run this down to there, maybe. So at least it's, you know, more or less straight east-west wise. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, we, we better put a pack stop there too. That's funny, man. All right. Put a net there. We got to We got to give some consideration to safety here, even though Fix-It doesn't give a shit about our safety. They just want us to be efficient. Alright, so we're fine here. We're not slamming anything there. Now, last thing that we're going to do for the hyper tubes is we're going to put some signs on them. So we'll just go with the uh, the small signs. And we want to kind of approach this from the side so we don't get sucked into it. So this is going to be second floor. And we'll use a hyper tube for the icon and for the colors. Let's go with a blue color. This blue is kind of our theme. A little bit darker. And select that color. Let's try an emission strength of two and maybe a glossy. Let's we'll see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and then what we'll do is same thing over here. Except for this is third floor. Uh, I don't know why the hell it does that. Got to recopy this again. Change this to third floor. Okay, that's good. Okay. Let's go up to the second floor. This one will say first floor. As will here, let's just copy the whole thing. Copy that when it said first floor? I guess I didn't. I don't know. I thought I did. Copy settings. Okay. And then we'll grab this and put it there. And this will be roof.
This would be third floor. Just like it remembered the second to the last time I copied it. It's really weird. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have set up our hyper tubes in the pyramid so we can get now easily get to each floor as needed. It is a beautiful thing. That is done. I don't have a to-do list. I should have, I should have probably done a to-do list. So we no longer need this business. And we don't, we're not going to need like any of the ladders and stuff. It's all, uh, you know, on the upper floor. So I'll remove those later as time goes on. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some ceiling tiles in place to hide our wiring outlets and to add a nice uniform pattern to the ceiling. So let's grab, uh, let's go into here. We're going to use the, actually the fix it foundation one meter because th I think it works really well for, for this. And we're going to pop that in place and then zoop it there and zoop that there. Any place that we have a That's a thing. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything about that. Unless unless we don't do the border uh, or make the border concrete. Yeah, maybe that's the solution to that. Because I can't slide that over because then it won't work out right on the on the opposite end. So let's slide that down to there. But anyway, what I was saying is any place that has a lift connected to the ceiling, we won't be able to, to do this without clipping, which I don't want to do. So I, I don't know what to do about that other than just to leave it open. So we'll run into that in a few places. But overall, I think it's going to make the ceiling look really nice in here. So yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we go to <clears throat> uh, materials and set the outer one to concrete. So that way we don't have this clipping issue. You can still kind of see a flicker, but not as bad as before. Okay, so let's run that. Let's just go along first and do the border since we have it set to the concrete version. See now, uh, here, let's, let's just go through that for the moment. We're not going to be able to go through any of that stuff. Um, one thing I could maybe try and do is put... You know, put some half blocks in. What would a floor hole look like? Um, I'm not sure about this. It do it doesn't do anything for the accordion is the problem with that. So that's not really going to work. Let's try something though. Let's go to here. Set these back to concrete. Get a ha one meter half foundation. Let's freeze it and then nudge it over. Now we'll do the same thing on this side. We have to turn it this way. That might work. Um, yeah, let, let's go with that for now. I'm not a hundred percent convinced I like that, but let's go with that for now. And if I change my mind later, then, you know, I change my mind later. All right, guys, this is future OG cutting in here with a news bulletin. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I spent a bunch of time fiddling around, you know, trying to make, um, half foundations, you know, fit in the places where the conveyor lifts were coming down into the ceiling and recorded myself doing that. And then I got to thinking, well, what I could just do is move the lifts down a click. And then that way they clear the ceiling and then we can put a nice clean ceiling all the way across. And then I asked myself, hmm, do you want to go to all the work to do that though? That's going to be a lot of work resetting all those lifts. And then I said to myself, 
you know what? If a job is worth doing, it's worth doing right. And so here I am. <laughs> so I'm going to go through and redo all these lifts and lower them all down a notch so we can get a nice clean ceiling in and not be messing around with this funky stuff. So I just wanted to uh, insert that here in the video. And uh, yeah, so there you go. I'm smarter than I was before. See you in a bit. See, man, that makes <clears throat> makes the ceiling look so much better. Because, again, it hides the outlets and it and it makes it nice and uniform and kind of gives it a bit of a, a tiled ceiling look. I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you get the idea. I'm going to go up and do the same thing on the second and third floors, and I'll bring you back when that is all done. Might as well go do the third floor first. All right, guys, we have finished shinying up the floor. Looks really good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to enclose uh, the conveyors and hyper tubes in some glass. I think that's going to look really good. So we want to go to walls and we're going to grab the full frame windows. And we're going to set these here and bring them all the way up to the ceiling. Or at least as high up as we can get it. And I think for here, all right, if we, if we take that all the way up, I think that's going to clip through the other side. Let's, uh, let's see if that's indeed what's happening. Well, maybe not. Okay, I guess it is not clipping through the other side. Let's go back down. I'm <laughs> I'm clunking into the glass. That's funny. Thunk. Okay, so then that means we can Cuz I guess we do have a Two meter thick floor. Two meter? Four meter, actually. Yeah, probably four meter thick floor. So, yeah, that does make sense. Now, for here, what we want to do is get a hypertube walls. Uh, no, sorry, not wall support. Wall hole. And then just move that over to there. to do the same thing on the other side after we put the wall in place on the other side <laughs> I'm like a bird man I'm like a bird clunk okay now here we can't really I mean, I could, I could clip it through, but I don't think I will. All right, why, why won't you let me put you there? Oh, because there's already a wall there, right, duh. Yeah, so for these, I mean, shit, we're already kind of clipping through as it is. don't know if, I don't think there's anything we can do about that to be honest with you um I mean we could bring it back down like that but I don't think we have yeah we don't have partial wall pieces is the problem okay yeah let's uh let's just leave it that way then I guess because there's not really any good way to do that. But I think it looks cool, you know, with it uh, enclosed like that. Now we need to put the wall hole in on this side for the hypertube. Hypertube wall hole. Uh, 
Here we go. <laughs> Still thumped it. What the hell, man? <laughs> okay, so that should not be happening, but it is. God. Okay, that cough uh, gave me a head rush. So, <laughs> so I don't know why that amuses me so much, but you know, <laughs> I'm flicking my head into the wall. It's letting me get through. So, I mean, in reality, if there was an actual wall hole there, of course there wouldn't be glass there. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, that kind of sucks that we can't do much about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a solution for this. That's two. That's two meters. Okay. So what if we? What if we took those away? Can I start the wall? Hmm. Okay. Let's do this just temporarily see now we can start the wall down there and we can go up to oh why is it not why is it not letting me do that though now it is so that at least lets me bring it up to you know closer two meters closer to the to the conveyors, which seems a little more realistic, I guess. Uh, okay, hold on. Put a filter on those. Okay, so we'll start this one down here. We'll start it up from the top and bring it down. like that that's better that is better for sure I just I mean I know I could just clip them through too and pretend like there's a hole there that would be the other option but uh, we want to do that because the reality of the situation is if there were if we were doing this for real we'd have to you know cut holes through the glass and have like grommets for it to go through it's just it's just that it's not consistent with that up there as a thing I'm gonna leave it like it is for now you guys let me know in the comments if you think I should run the glass all the way up through okay anyways let's go ahead and we're on the first floor right okay let's go to the whoop, uh, second floor <laughs> funk oh my god that's gonna make me laugh every time Sorry, but I'm just easily amused, right? So for this one, we're going to have the same situation, I think. Um, let's grab the glass again. We have that finished. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on some lighting. And similarly to what I did in update eight with my tower of power, we're going to use light switches, which will allow us to control the lights and configure them to do things like change their color and also their intensity. And I think what I'll do is I'll put the light switches in the corners. Um, all right, so let's go power. Uh, no, sorry, organization. And we want light control panel. And let's put... This doesn't really matter. 
we'll put it this way and pull it out there. All right, now one of these guys has an insulator that's that we can get to. Should have an insulator we can get to. Okay, there's one there. Um, why don't we grab you and put you there. Okay. And that's the main power, so that is going to come down to here. And then we should be able to patch this back up here. We're on, uh, yeah, we're on the first floor. Okay. Okay, so now we need to get that power up to the ceiling. Let, okay, let's hold off on that for a second. We've got to figure out our light, how we're going to do the lights now. So here's the thing. In Update 8, when I made my Tower of Power, which was this big, tall, skyscraper-sized tower, it had a bunch of refineries in it, and it was producing the... Um, the fuel for my fuel power plant. I added a metric shit ton of lights into that tower and it looked absolutely amazing. However, it really stuttered my computer. It was just so intense <laughs> on the computer. So I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it here. We're not going to like fill this entire city with lights or that would just, that'd be nuts. So we have to we have to be somewhat conservative with how we're going to do this. Um, so what we're going to do is, this is the direct center. Let's grab some ceiling lights. And what we're going to do is... All right, let's freeze that there for a minute. Maybe we'll bring that in... Okay, if we, if we put that one there and then we bring another one over this way. I just want to kind of see how the spacing of this is going to work out. All right, so then we do another one here and we're, we're lining up on that seam there for each one of these. Uh... So, see, this one's a little, uh, is that one, that one's a little closer just because of, you know, how we have to do those differently. But that gets us three lights into the glass tower there. So we, okay, so we can do one of two things with this. We can either keep it the way it is, so it's lined up on this seam here. But then the spacing is off between this light and this light. Or we can pull it out to the edge so that the spacing's correct, but then it's not lined up on the seam. And I, I'm kind of thinking I'd like it this way better so that the spacing's correct on the lights. All right, so yeah, let's do it that way. So let's go over here now. And this is our center tile. So we'll put that one in place. Then we'll line this one up on this seam here. And do that. And this one lined up on this seam here. And I think we need to bring it back this way one. Good. 
Okay, so that does the spacing um, between the lights. Now we need to figure out how many more we want to add to the north and to the south without overdoing it. We don't want to plaster this entire ceiling with lights or it's just going to... It's going to tank my machine. Well, it's not going to take my machine, but it's going to cause a lot of stuttering. So, if we... We did a row here and a row here. So maybe two more rows on this side and two more rows on that side. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So if we do it that way... And we go to... This seam... there and then this seam here is this no the spacing's not correct there okay so I definitely feel like there's more space here than there is over here and you know having everything line up with the pattern on the ceiling is fine and good but I think it's more important that the lights are spaced evenly amongst themselves so let's do this. Let's put this one here. And I might actually flip it this way so the wiring's on that side. And then if we put... We put that one there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Well, no, it's not. It's still... So we got a full tile and then a little piece there. We have a partial tile and a little piece there. So if we move it over this way, then I think our spacing's more accurate. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're not going to really be able to follow the pattern of the ceiling, I think, with this. If we're just going to go to you know, to each side, which we are going to do. Okay, so if we come over here then and see how, where did I start this one? So this center piece is just one click to the right of the center of the ceiling pattern. So I'll turn it around this way and there. And then this one is right in between. So its its centerpiece is one to the left of the seam there. So in this case, we would want to go one to the right. And I think that's even spacing. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go... <coughs> I'm going to set, excuse me, set these lights down uh, with even spacing on each floor. And I'll determine, you know, each floor as we go up, it gets narrower and narrower. So I'll figure out, you know, what the right spacing is and get all these lights in place. And then, um, see, the thing about the wiring for the lights is that the insulator is exposed and we can't bury that. So we'll probably, we're just going to have to keep the wiring for the lights uh, we're not going to be able to cover it up, and others is what I'm trying to say. Um, I could maybe try and put the the wiring up in the ceiling and then run it straight down. So I'll I'll mess with that and see what I can do. Uh, but anyway, once I get all these lights in place and all the switches in place, I'll bring you guys back, and then we'll do the next thing, which was going to be the outer shell of the factory. All right, guys, we have the lights finished. In uh, the seedling lights, I should say, we're going to do some more light work too, but it's uh, the stuttering is actually not too bad. It, there's a little bit, but it's not not as bad as I was expecting it to be. Um, and I did go ahead and run the wiring uh, up inside the ceiling, so um, you can see that I put like a an insulator up here and then ran the wire down so that way we prime hid you know pretty much hid the wiring and uh it's too bad we couldn't hide the, hide the insulators too but it is what it is but i think it looks fairly clean 
Uh, there is definitely some stuttering going on, but it's not terrible. Let's go look at the second floor. So, looking pretty good up here. I like how the light, you know, kind of shines on the conveyor belts. And even, you know, reflects off of the glass there. Pretty cool looking. And then let's go look at the third floor. I guess we don't really... Uh, yeah, I guess we don't have a way to get up to the third floor from here. We have to go back down to the first floor. It's nice to have some lighting in... Oh, <laughs> I have some lighting here in here now, though. And this is what the third floor looks like. All right, cool. Now, because of the fact that we put these on light switches, what we can do is we can come in here and we can we can change the intensity so we can turn the lights down if we want to, so they're not quite so bright. We can turn them off altogether. Um, and I can I could even set this to night mode, but. I don't think I will for the factory. I think we'll keep it, um, uh, keep them on all the time. And this is the cool part. Check this out. Huh? What do you think about that, eh? <laughs> so we can go down on each floor and we can turn this into the blue pyramid. I like it. Because blue is kind of our main theme color for this playthrough. How's that, eh? We're not done yet. We are not done yet. And at, you know, when it's full nighttime, that's when it's really going to look cool. But you go in here and it kind of has almost like a black light type of feel, you know? Looks really cool. Okay, I'm going to set it back to normal lighting for now so we can actually see a little bit better. Uh, on what we're doing and then we're gonna do some lighting up on top as well Oop, <laughs> I did it again there's glass there OG your nose would appreciate it if you'd remember that Clunk. so let's set uh, all the lighting back to white for now and you know with these switches too we can change it anytime we want to so if I'm in a red mood Maybe I'll change it to red at some point. Or green. Green was my main theme color in my Update 8 playthrough. And we could even set it to rainbow colors if we wanted to. Have each floor a different color, which is what I did on my uh, Power of Tower in Update 8. Beautiful. Okay, so let's go up to the roof now. And we're going to do some stuff up here. So, um, what I want to do is... I need to get up in the air for this. Maybe even a little higher. All right. Now we're going to get a a tilted wall, uh, four meter. I'm going to stick this. I th think right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, flood or wall mounted floodlights and we're going to stick it here. Okay, I think I need to slide that.
Yeah, I think that's what I think that's what I want to do. Say so let's set it, but not permanently set it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the mouse wheel to push it back. So what it's doing is it's shining light up onto the space elevator. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Now what we're going to do is jump up here, maybe even a little higher. And maybe go out this way a little bit. Okay. We're going to go to architecture and we're going to grab a painted beam. We're going to put that beam uh, right there. And, uh, well, actually, I think I have to start it on the other side. I have to start it over on this side. And it's just where I need to go is really tight. Right there. Okay. And then we're going to run the beam this way. Yeah, no, I need to get... Okay, let's do this. Let's... Let's get out this way. It's all about getting the right angle. Okay, so we're going to do that, but we're also going to use our mouse wheel and we're going to tilt the beam at that angle so it's the same angle as the base of the light. So that way, you know, it looks like the light's attached to the, um, to the beam, right? And not just floating in the middle of an open hole like we're doing right now. <laughs> okay. So let's head on back down here now, and we'll get rid of all of the scaffolding. Okay. Um. I stand on this? I can. I have no idea why sometimes it lets me stand on it and sometimes it doesn't. Let's remove this and hmm, we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. And then I want to where does the power actually connect on this? Looks like it kind of connects in the front. All right, so what if we put you there? And then run you up to there. Yeah, that looks good. But the thing is, is we want to actually put these lights on a switch, too, so we can change their color and their intensity. So to do that, mm, I got to think about how I'm going to actually do that. I mean, because I don't want I don't want a bunch of exposed wires is the thing. This is supposed to be in place too. Right, because there that little lip was missing. Alright, 
Uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna try a couple of things here. So let's remove you, and let's remove you. Okay. Find out which block the insulator was on. Was it on this one? No, looks like it was maybe on the next one up. This one? Where the hell did I put those things? Oh, I must have run them all the way up from here. Okay. Because I don't think this is... This isn't on now. No, it's not. I ran that pole off of something here. Is it underneath here? I'm, like, so confused about where everything's supposed to be hooked up here. Tear the whole damn building apart. Oh, okay, so I ran it off the underneath side of those dealios. I gotcha. Right, okay, so... Let's put these back in place. Should be able to just go from here to there. Get that going. Put that there. I think I doubled up right here, yeah. Now, we had a, how did I get that block? Oh, I know how I got that block in there. That goes there. And that goes there. Now we have power to this. So what I want to do, though, is I want to run... Let's uh, lift this back up for a minute. If we connected to that insulator, we would be on the switch down below, which would then, of course, mean whatever we do on the third floor would also be applied to the roof, which wouldn't be ideal if we wanted to be able to change the roof different from everything else. Okay, so um, let's put this back in place for a second. And we're going to grab another light control panel. Turn it this way. And we can run the main power to here. to change this. Run the main power straight up through there into there. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. And then we'll put this here and run that up to there. That way it's coming off the light switch. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll grab you and we're going to put you right there. And 
I think we can now cover this back up. Now, how far down can I go? Well, we need, we're going to need to actually stop here again. Okay, so that, the problem with that, though, is that's going to make the hypertube power contingent upon the light switch, which probably wouldn't be an issue unless I needed to turn the lights off to troubleshoot a power issue or something, but, you know, I would want my hypertubes to keep working. So that being the case, I think what we want to do then is pick this up once again. And let's run. Oh, that's maxed out already. Shit. Okay, let's do this then. Put another one there for main power. And then we'll come over here. Grab this. Put it down there. And then go up to there. Excellent. Now, we want to run this all... <laughs> Damn it, Jim. Knock it off. We want to run this all the way down to the other end of here. Uh, let's make that... A solid piece. We'll put that there. And we'll run this to here. Good. Should hide all of that wiring. Except for, of course, that piece right there. And that light is on. Good, good. And if we change it to a purple light, it should be a purple light. <laughs> Look at that. Or pink. Purple pink. Um, we'll just keep it white for the moment. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to set up three more lights just in, in that same fashion that I did there, pointing up at the space elevator on these four towers and run the wiring along the pillars underneath and get all that in place. And when that's done, I'll bring you back. And then we will uh, do the last part of this, well, really kind of the second to the last part of this build. Okay, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, let's go ahead and work on putting the walls in place of our pyramid here. Um, one thing to be aware of, in case you aren't already aware of this, is that the game does not give us um, a 45-degree wall for glass. Uh, it gives us, like, the solid wall, like this one here. Um, but even that, you know, if, we, if I did use this, it's still not really the right angle you know compared to our our pillar there as you can see but what would have been a cool is if we could have found uh, if we had a glass piece that would be the correct angle you know to, to run up the pyramid so so it all matched but there there isn't anything there's no angled glass at all uh, that I'm aware of now we have windows but they're all vertical windows we have vertical windows and we have flat glass uh, so we have like uh, the glass foundation uh, no that's an architecture sorry um, we have so we have the flat glass roof and we have the flat grass glass 
frame foundation. But we don't have anything glass-wise that's that we can use angularly speaking. Um Well, no, I take the back. We do, but but only the four the two meter and the four meter version. Um and that's way too shallow, right, for, for this. So it, it doesn't match the angle. So that's the first thing to know, in case you were wondering. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind about pyramids is, especially if you consider, like, you know, the Egyptian pyramids, they all have kind of a stair-step slope anyways. And so we're going to uh, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Uh, so I need to just make some temporary uh, scaffolding here. And uh, here's how we're going to do this. This is going to look actually look really good, I think. Uh, so we're going to go to walls, and we're going to go to uh, the full frame window here. We've got some new windows here, too, that would be kind of fun to play with. But I'm, I'm going for lots of glass and minimal, you know, framing for this. So we're going to put this full frame window down. We're going to zoom it out that way, and then we're going to also... Uh, zoop it all the way to the stairs. Okay, and then we're gonna go up uh, again. So we so we're too high, and then we can put these back in place. Good. All right, now let's go ahead and get up high. I sure missed the hover pack, but we won't get that till the next phase. Uh, that would certainly come in handy right now. Um, so we'll just use a, I guess we'll use a ladder. So let's get a ladder going and we'll get up, up in the air a bit so we can get above this. Maybe even a little more. Yeah, that, that should be okay. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to... Uh the top here and we're going to get the flat roof piece the glass roof piece and we're going to put that here but we actually want it to be on that side with the thicker part facing inward and then we're going to zoop that all the way down to the stairs oh it looks like I missed one of the walls Actually, no, this is going to go all the way down to the other side. And let's zoop the top wall down there and the bottom wall, but we'll we'll cut this this piece back out. Um now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these walls and we're going to go up too high again. And zoop that all the way down. And then once again, get the roof piece. Put that there. Go out to there, and then zoop this down. And then I think what we'll do here, because we do have a little bit of a gap here. I think we'll go ahead and put another row of walls in. Uh, wait, hold on a sec. Clunk. Yeah, like that. And then just kind of fill that gap in there. Um. Right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this little stair step pattern all the way up to the top. Um, let's let's actually do this. So let's come over onto this side. And we'll temporarily remove those. And zoop the glass that way. And that can be zooped all the way down there. And we'll zoop that down there. And then we want this to turn this way and zoop that way. Oh, I don't like that. Um, I think we'll 
let's yeah let's remove that too I wouldn't mind this if there was some kind of a seam underneath it. This is one of the new pieces. Honeycomb. But that doesn't really match anything. But but it's got this, you know, uh, trim on the bottom side, which I like. What would this look like? Uh, this one here. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Especially, okay. That's black. This is more gray. So what if we... Can we use these on this? Oh yeah, we can. That's cool. Um, can we use these on these? No, we cannot. Okay. Uh, unpainted. What's that look like? It looks like it's unpainted. Alright, well let's do this then. Let's go to the custom swatch and... Let's turn this uh, to be more of a gray color. Um, yeah, it's kind of more of a brownish gray. Something like maybe that. I'm just sort of kind of eyeballing this. Let's just try that. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to... It's definitely not correct, but... I'd have to work with a little bit more. I think, though, that's probably okay. For that. Now, what I wanted to show you... Is... If we get over here... Okay. Now, what I'm going to do f to r to deal with this issue is we're going to basically double up the pillars. So if we put that pillar there, and then we zoop up like this, what that does is it covers... It'll cover all corners except for this one. That's the only one it doesn't cover, because I've already tested this. Uh, but as we put these windows in, you know, further up, all the corners will be covered. And I have I have a solution for this, too. We will, This will ultimately also be hidden, so it doesn't, doesn't show up like that. Okay? So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to go around the entire pyramid and... Put in these little stair step glass walls and ceilings until we get all the way to the top. When I'm finished with that, I'll bring you back. And we will do the last part of this little cosmetic build here we're doing. So see you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, and uh, I finished the the walls here. Just kind of a, what it's looking like. I think it's looking pretty damn good. We'll, uh... I'll show it to you, of course, at night time, too, where it's really cool looking, but, um, yeah, um, so we're going to do some trim work, and then we're pretty much going to be done with this. Uh, I also coated the stairway here, too. I don't know if I'll coat things down here. I don't want to overdo it on the coating, but it's kind of cool that, you know, with the stairs, but it's kind of, you know, in the, the pyramid looks pretty neat. As you even just kind of approach it, going up into it, I like it. I like the way it's coming together. 
Okay, so for the trim work, let's go ahead and fly on over, back over here. Um, there was a couple of different ways that I was going to do this. Um, one method was to use lighted signs. But here's the thing. I, I tested this, and if I add light strips to the trim, it really s starts to tank the... The frames. Well, not the. No, again, it's not really frames so much as it's stuttering. It's just really, really pretty bad stuttering. So I think we're not going to put um, lighted trim on the building. Uh, instead, we're going to go with um, a blue steel beam trim, which also looks pretty good. And again, you know, with all the lights inside, and I am going to do some lighted trim on the the central section. You know, that's encased in glass with all the conveyor belts and the hypertubes. We'll, we'll put some light strips on that because it does look really neat. But if I put it on the entire pyramid, it's, you know, every time I, I look at it, it just stutters really bad. So for that reason alone, I don't think we'll do that. Um, all right. So for the trim, what we're going to do is we're going to grab. Um, and incidentally, uh, it is the next day in real life for me. And <laughs> I'm even worse now than I was yesterday cold wise. So sorry about the coffin and all that. But it's what it is, right? Uh, okay, so we're going to grab the painted uh, beam, and we need to get right on the edge of this, and then we want to put it right there, and then, uh, oh, player's in the way, okay, and then we want to make sure this is on diagonal mode, so if, if you just tap the R key, it'll change between diagonal, freeform, or default, which is just, you know, straight, horizontal, or whatever, um, so we want this to be in diagonal mode, and then we're going to set it, and then, uh, start to run it down, the thing is, is when you first set the beam it does it just because of the positioning of the player it does some weird stuff so i just want to get the angle set first and then once the angle is set then it behaves a little bit better we can go take it down as, as far down as it'll go which is 40 meters and then let's grab it again here And this will pretty much cover this protrusion, too, so that fixes that issue. And then just take this all the way down to the ground. Uh, well, it wants to flip up right there. Actually, you know what? That's fine. I think we'll just leave it that way. So, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I did toy around a little bit too when I was testing this uh, with some of these different finishes. Um, but honestly, I I kind of I kind of like the default blue look. The gold est actually isn't terrible. Hmm. All right, let's try. There's the carbon steel. That's kind of like a black, almost a, a gunmetal type of look. All right. Um, let's try chrome. Okay. Yeah, that's not very bad. Copper. Yeah. I don't think so. And then there's uh, the unpainted. So it basically kind of gives it a silver metallic look, which isn't too bad either. But that doesn't contrast quite as well with the light gray colored con concrete. So, I mean, I think if I was going to do this, either the carbon steel or the caterium would look cool. But, I, I don't know, I still think just keeping it, you know, our default blue color looks the best. It's, it's simple. You know, it's not like overdone or anything, and I think it looks good. I, this is kind of bugging me a little bit, actually, now, but I don't know how to get that damn thing to, to finish out. Maybe what I need to do is 
run it from the ground up. So, or or put it up a little bit so I can run it into the ground. Yeah. Oh, right there. Perfect. Okay. That's what I was looking for. And then we could probably just. Um, these beams can really do some weird things sometimes. What if we start it here and go up? There. Yeah, I I think I favor the blue the most. So we're gonna go we're gonna go with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all uh, the other three big uh, angled pillars, and then we're also gonna run a strip you know horizontally across the front on each of the floors as well. I don't I probably won't do anything on those pillars. I think I'll just leave those the way they are because they're they're the basement. And then when we get that done, we'll put some light strips up. In fact, I'll, I'll just show you this now, and then I'll just do it all off camera to finish things up here. But what we're going to do here is we're going to grab some, we're going to grab the four meter label sign, and we're going to put it like this. Did that one... Yeah, that one glitched into the other one. Okay. And then... We'll go into here, we'll remove the text, we'll set the background to nothing. Um, we'll change the emission strength to 2 and glossy, and make the color white. Copy settings. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I, I changed the wrong color, it needs to be this one. There we go. And that just makes us a nice little light strip. And we'll just go up here and paste the other ones. And so, yeah, we'll, what we'll do is we'll trim this out. Uh, I'll also do, you know, these center beams and we'll trim this out in these white lights. And I think it blends well with the the white lighting of the Mark III belts and the blue lighting of the uh, factory itself. And e e even now, you know, there's just, a, there's a little bit of stuttering going on and there, there will be even more once I put all these in, but for some reason, you know, you do a lot of these lighted signs and they, they're pretty, pretty hefty on the machine, uh, as are these overhead lights too. Okay, so let me get that done, and then I'll bring you back, and I'll show you the final result. We'll do, we'll do a we'll do a daytime result, and we'll also do a nighttime result. All right, guys, here is the completed pyramid in the daytime, and uh, I think it's looking pretty good. So we'll do a we'll do a look see at it at night too, but uh, we got all the trim in place, and I finished all the uh, running the lights inside there I uh, made the decision to apply the plastic coating to the beams too I decided that that would look good and then I found out that you can't because you can only, only put that on the on flooring or on foundations and these aren't considered foundations so the game wouldn't let me do that so that that fixed that <laughs> uh, but yeah it's looking pretty good here I put in uh, this big door here and as we walk into the factory uh, you know one thing about this factory of course is we still have room for expansion in the future if we if we need it we certainly don't need it right now I mean I got I'm throwing 90 percent of this stuff into the sink if not more but you know that certainly could change in the future uh, so you know these are all plates or yeah these are all plates here so we have all this space here that we can expand if we needed to um, we can expand screws because I currently have 
two screw machines shut off right now that we're not even using. I guess I can't open those up because I'm in photo mode. Uh, but yeah, these two over here that are yellow uh, with the yellow light, those are turned off just because I was massively overproducing. And um, the only thing, we don't really have room to do more of our rods. So if we get to a, a point in the future where we need more rods for buildables, in other words, for central storage and not you know, any rods that we need in a production line, I'll just build into the production line. Uh, we'd have to maybe rethink that. I mean, there is some room to to move these machines closer together here. So I don't know, just get in the fly mode. Um, I could slide these machines over and pop another one in here. And may eh, I don't know if I could do that on this side, but I definitely could do that on this, on this side if we needed to do so. Um, and then let's see, are we on what floor are we on? Yeah, let's go to the second floor. If we had to, I could expand. Uh, well, yeah, I've got like two Katerium wire machines turned off or quick wire machines. So we can turn those on to increase capacity. And I have, it looks like one wire machine turned off. So we could turn that on for more. Over here, I we're running all of our copper sheet machines. But that's not something you need in massive, massive quantities. So we'll probably be okay with copper sheeting. Uh, at least for the time being, if not for the entire playthrough. And then up above, we have, um, how do I get to the, oh, yeah, we got to go back down to the first floor, I'm trying to remember how to get around my factory. We go up to the third floor. Um, there's not, there's not really room in here to, to expand. It's pretty pretty compact in here as you can see um i i really took a hard look at trying to bring our glass enclosure up here too but there's there's just too much shit in the way uh, to do that and not really any room to move things around that's not to say i couldn't have potentially done it but you know um then i would have kind of messed with the feng shui up here because as you can see, you know, it, it's pretty compact. So I decided I'm not going to do it. And, you know, it's kind of a bummer in a way because when you're looking at the factory from outside and you see the nice cool towers with the white lighting up on the second, first and second floor, but then when you look on the third floor, it's not there. So it kind of breaks up that continuity. But, you know, it's one of those things where function is more important than form in this particular case, I would say. Okay. And then, um, let's see, is there anything else? I want to show you. Let's go up to the roof. I redid the the wiring here a little bit. I, I did have the pole over here, and it was making it so that I couldn't move this direction without getting sucked back into the <coughs> to the hyper, hyper tube there. So, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for our build out of the pyramid. So it's looking pretty good. I like the way that it, it came together. You know, it's not uh, it's not super complex. It's fairly sim simple, but you know, there is uh, beauty in simplicity. I'm I, I'm a little bit. Uh, I would like to say I'm a, a little bit of a minimalist. I'm not. I mean, I mean, I'm not a crazy minimalist. I do like some nice style and fancy stuff, but you know, I don't overdo it either. And I think that if there's you know, if you don't overdo it. If you do it just right, then it looks, well, just right. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with, with how it came together here. All right, guys. Well, I will bring you back uh, at nighttime uh, for one final pass through at night. Uh, it looks pretty damn cool with all the lighting and stuff. And, yeah, so I'll see you this evening. All right, guys. Here is the factory at nighttime. So it's looking pretty good. Um, let me take my own light off here. I tried different uh, 
colors on the lights, you know, the floodlights for the space elevator, but none of them really worked well to accentuate the red, um, except except for white. And the other thing too is there's kind of a distance thing going on. If you get too far away from it, you can't really. These lights don't go very far. They don't project very far. Um, I did try red here, but I didn't think that it looked as, uh, that it was even worse in terms of its intensity. Let's get rid of that. So, yeah, I, I like white. I think white works better for this. And then that's what the interior looks like from the outside at nighttime. Make a pretty good screenshot right there, I think. Um, all right, let me do something here first. If you bring up the coffee cup and then put it away, it makes it makes your floating hands disappear for our screenshots. Uh, why don't we get down a little more so we get some of the space elevator in the shot. And, yeah, let's go with that. Maybe we'll take a couple shots from the side here. Uh, I'll try one there. And then let's get... Thing is, is if I get too far away, then we start losing some of the lighting. Maybe do it one from, say, this angle. And we'll try one from out here, too, with the street lights in the foreground. That's kind of cool looking. All right. This is what it looks like on the inside at night, just walking around. And I really like how the <coughs> the trim, you know, trimmed out lights here look. I had to, I, oh, by the way, I did make the decision to go ahead and put the glass up at the top too, and just assume that, you know, those conveyor belts are, there's a hole that's been cut and they're going through a grommet because it, it didn't look right with, with the top not being in place. Kind of broke up the, the line, so to speak. So I decided to do that. I needed, I also moved a couple of conveyor belts over a little bit so they weren't clipping as badly into the into the lights. Um, you know, there's a little bit of clipping going on right there, but it's not, it's not drastic. I had a couple that were really bad, and so I, I managed to, you know, move those uh, conveyor belts over. Um, I, actually, I think I did that on the second floor. Um, let's actually go back down for a second and go to the second floor. So, yeah, this, this belt here was curving. Here, let's uh, get our light back on. It was curving right into here, going out, you know, that way. So I moved, I moved it over so it came out before it curved, and then I did the same thing with this belt here as well, because we had plenty of room, you know, to do that. It wasn't a problem at all. But yeah, that looks good. Looking good. I think I want to get a couple of interior screenshots as well. So let's go back down to the first floor and uh, maybe we'll come around this way again. Do something from here so we kind of get the reflection of the lights on the, on the flooring. Get a more of an angle so we also see the other 
the lights going around the corner there too. Yeah, that looks good. I'm pretty happy, guys, with how this came together. Considering this is our starter factory, <laughs> this is by far the fanciest I've ever gotten on a starter factory in this game, uh, for sure. But I'm, uh, like I said, I'm pretty pleased with with how it came together. And um, you know, I, I think I mentioned this before. I, I I've recorded this whole thing in multiple different clips. Um, but if I didn't already say this, I'm pretty sure that I did. But if I didn't. Um, there's room for expansion here too, right? So we can expand plates, screws, wire, quick wire. Um, and th those things in particular would be very easy to expand. We just need to upgrade to Mark IV belts, uh, which I am going to be doing some Mark IV logistic work uh, starting out at our power plant because, um, you know, so we can get that power plant running at full capacity. And I also have, I have some kind of an inconsistency here that I'm, I'm trying to troubleshoot. But I think what I'll, it's not coming from the new power plant either. I, I'm pretty sure there's probably some machine inside the factory here because I kind of checked all the satellite locations and they seem to be fine. I didn't, come to think of it though, you know what, I didn't actually go out and look at the oil production there could be something out there that's stalling out consistently um so i gotta troubleshoot that but even you know even if i don't figure it out i mean this is still pretty clean this is still pretty clean oh okay I spoke <laughs> damn it i spoke too soon wow what the hell just happened there oh my god all right i don't know um that's a big dippity do in power Very curious. All right. Well, obviously, I have some troubleshooting to do on our power network, which I will do. But I'm, I'm going to start, first of all, though, by going out uh, to our coastal power plant, um, which is right here. I guess I should probably mark that and get it full f to full capacity. Um, and I wasn't able to do that because we didn't have the Mark IV logistics, which we do now. Speaking of which... I know I need to end this episode. It's going to be a long one, but these build episodes usually are. Yeah, we we could we could do this. I mean, that would give us the the big fluid tank. We'll definitely do fuel power at some point in the future. Um, but this is really the only thing that would be super useful to us right now, but I'm, I'm still going to have to handcraft 100 motors, which I could do. I've got all the rest of the stuff easily in spades. But, yeah, we'll worry about that later. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this build. And um, let me know what you think on how it came together. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what we'll do in the next episode, but we'll do something, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.